For today's video, I have Angui P1, which is the newest bike in Angui family. Well, if you don't know Angui electrical bikes yet, you've been living probably under a rock. These bikes already have built great reputation, and today we're going to review their newest one. Let's start with the basics then. The bike comes with 250 watt motor mounted in the rear wheel, and the wheels, as you can see, are made out of cast aluminum. I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's what they're made of. As we continue going over the rear of the bike, you can see there is mounted really stable bike rack, which officially can carry up to 25 kilograms of weight, but I believe it can carry much more. And Angui even includes a little bag, which can actually be mounted in different places. I just mounted it now on the rear rack. Also at the back, you will find 16 inch disc brake, the same as on the front wheel. The bike comes with seven sprockets at the rear and one sprocket at the front, making it seven gears. And the sprockets are being shifted by Shimano Tourney derailleur. Derailleur? Derailleur. Derailleur. Whatever this thing. When you look at the bike, it's probably easy to see that the bike can be folded right here. So it has foldable pedals. And then you just need to open this bracket. and fold the bike in half. Now, what you don't see is that the battery sits right here in the top tube of the bike. And when you use the key, you can actually unlock the battery pack, and take out the key, and then you can remove it for charging at home or for security or for whatever other reason you might have. Maybe you carry a spare one and want to extend your range. There is a 13 amp hour battery pack, which if you ride at around 25 kilometers per hour and don't pedal at all, should be enough for you to go for about 20-ish kilometers. But of course you have pedals and you can pedal this bike without any battery pack or motor quite easily. So your range is basically unlimited. Okay, I am a 1 meter, 91, 90 kilogram rider. And as you can see, this bike is not really too small for me. It's kind of okay. Yes, it's not a full size bike and I cannot extend my leg, but it's decent size for me to ride more than 20 kilometers and still feel kind of comfortable. Now, if you are a smaller rider, the bike is adjustable. You can lower the handlebars and you can lower the seat. It's a little bit more problematic now. Still doable though. The bike also comes with a phone holder. It's not the most stable one, but hey, it holds the phone. Super simple shifter from Shimano. And also bike comes with optional twist throttle, half twist throttle. And if you want to unlock the twist throttle to make it operational, you have to twist it to the very end, hold the brake at the same time, and then turn the bike on. And now if I put to any pedal assist level and hit the accelerator, the bike will start running. The bike also comes with the front suspension, which is a simple spring load suspension. It works while it's new. I know that after some time passes, these suspensions kind of stop working. Controls of the bike are really simple. You have one on-off button on the top and two buttons at the bottom. With the top button, you just turn it on and off and you go through maximum speeds on the trip, average speed, trip, odometer, and so on. And with the bottom buttons, you can change pedal assist level from one to five, which will result in different 
drive speeds. If you keep two buttons closed, you will get into parameter menus where you can set the voltage of the bike, the tire size, maximum allowed speed. In stock it comes with 25, this is where you can actually set it to 40. I'm a 90 kilogram rider and as you can see we max out at around 33. Someone will say, oh, I can get you, you know, whatever, 36 or even 40. Yes, lighter rider probably can get to 40, going downhill even more. But 33, 34 kilometers per that's a good speed. I mean... Let's not forget that manufacturer says that the bike goes at 25 kilometers per hour and you get 35. That's a good deal. Next is me climbing on the bike up steep and long hill and looking how the bike is dealing with it. Okay, we are doing 22 kilometers per hour now and I'm pedaling. I will actually use a lighter gear. 20 kilometers per hour. It's not a big work that I'm doing here. The bike is doing most of the work. If I stop doing work, the speed is falling to just 17, 16. Still climbs. It's more fun when you can help your bike, work together with your bike and climb up. On the way back I was pleasantly impressed by how the bike handles at the higher speeds of 45 km per hour. The brakes were completely adequate for those speeds, there was no speed bubble or anything like that, so the bike can go faster than 40 km per hour without bigger issues. So this bike for me looks like a real commuter, it's not too heavy, so you can't carry it around, it weighs 25 kilograms, I believe. So you can lift it, carry it into the bus or put it into the trunk and so on. And it's also not like too powerful. It's fast enough, it goes 35 kilometers per hour and it can do a decent range for you, especially if you help and pedal. So it's a really nice thing for commuting, much, much more comfortable and much, much more healthy in terms that you can exercise than any of the electrical scooters. Overall, the build quality is super nice. Nothing is rattling when you ride the bike. Everything came pretty nice pre-assembled. I didn't have to adjust any brakes or anything like that. So that's all the upsides of the bike. For the downsides, I have not done too many kilometers on it yet. To be honest, I struggle a bit to defining real downsides for this bike. After I use this bike for 500 or 1000 kilometers, I will make a follow-up video and I hope to see you in that one.